Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 28, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Over the last week or so, the developing coronavirus situation in China, of course, has gotten a lot of news attention whenever we do see a topic like this being heavily covered. There is always a good chance that we will see some fraud associated with the issue. Now, historically, uh, the two top things we have seen here are websites that are popping up that either sort of collect fraudulent donations or are offering other kind of fraudulent content. We also have seen malware typically that uses, for example, news about the event to trick users into open malicious attachments, in particular videos. If you see anything like this, uh, please let us know. Now, one thing uh, we have observed is there are certainly a lot of domain names related to the virus being registered. At this point, I haven't really seen anything sort of malicious on these domains yet. Most of them are just parked or have some blank sort of placeholder page at this point. Now, of course, I don't really have any insight in what could happen with this situation, but this is probably not a bad time to dust off your business continuity and disaster recovery plans uh, to take a look if they are still current. At the time when you know you need those plans, it's probably too late to review them and to actually correct any problems that they may have. Just a couple days after a denial of service, proof of concept was released for the remote desktop gateway vulnerability CVE 2020-0609 and 0610. Security researcher Luca Marcelli posted a, a video of a demonstration of an exploit that he wrote that actually achieves remote code execution. This exploit has not been made public yet. Uh, Luca states that uh, he may post a blog post about this in the future. Of course, no telling how detailed it will be or if it will just sort of be another copy of this video. At this point, probably the easiest thing that you can do if you can't patch for whatever reason is only allow access to your remote desktop gateway via HTTPS in order to exploit this vulnerability and an attacker needs UDP access to the gateway. And in the past, I talked uh, frequently about vulnerabilities in antivirus software. Now, often you have, for example, issues with compression or unpacking uh, features in that software that could even be leveraged uh, to achieve remote code execution. Now, what's a little bit missing here in the past has been sort of concrete cases where these vulnerabilities were actually exploited. Well, it turns out that a compromise of Mitsubishi Electric actually was caused by a vulnerability in Trend Micro Office Scan. This was a directory traversal vulnerability, but one that could lead to a remote code execution and was here apparently used to compromise several systems in the course of the event at Mitsubishi Electric and X filtrate a number of different documents. Now, part of the information here is from a press release by Mitsubishi that I was only able to translate with uh, Google's translate function, but it uh, looks like the actual compromise happened back in June. The related vulnerability was patched by Trend Micro in October. So at the time this vulnerability was exploited, there was no patch available. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.